um, United. United drew 1-1 West Ham today. Disappointed with the result. I think, um, by and large, I think we've all kind of seen, we've all kind of noticed the level that we're at now as a, as a team, right? I think most United fans are under no illusions as to where we sort of stand, where our standing is. I think we've kind of been taken down a couple of notches over the last couple of weeks. And I think it's a good thing. I think partly, part of me thinks if we would have went into the last few games of the season on a roll, winning every single one, securing top four, maybe two games prior to the ones that we're playing, it would have given us a false sense of um, superiority, a false sense of accomplishment. I think our fan base is still divided and really split as to what we actually need. And I think we need to come to some sort of common consensus that the team and the infrastructure isn't where it needs to be. Um, Obviously, I'll talk a bit about it later, but for the game itself, um, we started off extremely... I think we started off okay. Um, you knew what West Ham were going to do. They were, they've been on a really good uptick since they've come back from the... Um, from Yes, yeah, since they've started... Re since the restart, West Ham have played really well, excuse me. Um, that signing of the guy called Sionchek Sio Sio for midfield has been... You know, he's been a real revelation. Declan Rice has really upped his levels. Not sure if it's him growing his hair has really helped. And then, of course, Mikel Antonio up front, man. Like, he's never looked the best out wide. He's always kind of had a lot more heart and desire and athleticism more so than he's got panache. But bloody hell, man. His ability to learn how to play like a number nine in the last few weeks has been quite frightening he's taken to it really well like he does the, the pure basics backs up into defenders hold the ball up knock it into the wings run into the areas he's done every finish from outside the area headed goals tap into the box like it's really odd to f find a player like him that's you know who showed you know who for lack of a better phrase was raw quote unquote um had obviously his attributes really fast really strong um incredible engine for that regard that's how he is right he can get up and down that pitch a lot and then he's been used in a number of positions for West Ham but to play him up front that was a real uh, master stroke from Moyes who I've got absolutely no time for right David Moyes but that was a really good move so I was never expecting United to come and roll over West Ham do you know what I mean I always knew it was going to be a tricky game and we've obviously been, you know, I don't know if we're short on fitness, if the players are just tired or the pressure's getting to them, but we just don't look at the races at the moment. And it just started off that way. I guess the midfield didn't really get a handle on the game, which we essentially lost, especially when you're playing against a team that's sitting that deep. You need to get some sort of handle on the midfield in order to kind of stretch your position and move them around a bit on the pitch. We didn't do that. And then, you know, um, soon took that De Declan Rice and I'd say Mark Noble which completely took over. They gave, gave us a lot of threats on the counter. Um, that Bowen guy on the wing who I think they signed from Hull, he would have been a much better signing than signing Daniel James, that's for sure. He looks like, he looks like a proper player. He looks in this, probably the same sort of class level as a as a McGinn at um, Aston Villa, right? So it makes you think really, Does if McGinn was available and this Bowen guy was available and we went for James, our scouting system's a bit off, I think, in my regard. Like, because James, much as I love the kid, there's not much ceiling for him as a player, is there? But hey, another point. So, um, of course, we start off in the wrong foot due to Paul Pogba's horrendous mistake. Um, big error on his part. He really flopped and fl he really mess us up in that regard putting his hands to his face to protect his face whilst from the Declan Rice volley very very well hit ball don't get me wrong look how he slapped it and was heading into a top corner or something so maybe it was better that he gave away the penalty in terms of it being a poor I don't know no, no, no excuse really he put his hands up he, put, he should have headed the ball out he didn't and then we're down 1-0 already playing badly and he was like flipping hell but I was actually quite confident of us even though we went a goal behind I kind of think like we respond better when we go goal behind nowadays this com this current united is better off scoring really quickly and then holding on to that win or trying to fight back from a one nil deficit but we're not really good at trying to win a game last minute one nil you know i mean like that doesn't really suit our sort of uh, way of playing anymore we don't have the the players with the right mentality to be able to handle that kind of pressure in game and make the necessary changes and our coaching team don't really seem like they know what they're doing when things go wrong or when they need to figure something else out they don't seem to have any sort of quick ability to impact the game um so yeah i was a bit nervous but i also thought we were going to come back then we started off the second half pretty strong i think um the one bit of intricate play between our front line greenwood um martial and i think one did a few bits and pieces maybe pogba the one good bit about it um and then it kind of birthed the goal from that right a very well taken goal from greenwood in the books but then other than that the game was completely a 
a bit of a no-show. Um, West Ham really offered most of the threat for the last 20 minutes or so, and we just looked laboured. Um, Bruno didn't have a good game. Matic probably had his poorest game he's had in a while. Uh, Pogba had a really bad game, of course. He looked like the mistake really affected him, as opposed to um, the previous game. Um, he looked like he didn't, he couldn't really get over it. Um, I thought Tim Phil's who meant the first half wasn't really that bad, but he didn't look that much better than... than then um, he did the first game he came back. And also, I'm a bit dubious as to how much better Tim Fosu Mesta is going forward than a, um, than a Dalo, really. I think he's been, he's been unfairly treated by Soul Shark in that regard. And then, of course, up front, um, Rashford just looks like he's not fit. Rashford looks like he needs a rest. But Soul Shark hasn't been able to re rotate the side, to be honest. To be fair to him, we don't really have the squad to do it. And he doesn't necessarily have the coaching nows to know how to get the best out of what we have available whilst being a bit clever I don't know because there, there's some clever solutions that could have been done right you could have maybe not played you could have maybe not played Matic and Pogba as sitting deep you probably could have had Pog Matic maybe playing alongside Maguire um, in order to kind of push the fullbacks up a bit more maybe you could have had I don't know a, a Fred playing in midfield alongside a Pogba and a Bruno maybe maybe you would you would lose a bit of ball retention that way you could have maybe had a Dallow maybe playing a bit further up in front of a Aaron Wan Bissaka or Tim Fivoso Mensa to give you a bit more cover and also some athleticism on the right hand side to maybe counterbalance what's going on in the left. You could have maybe pulled out Martial to the left, checking off Rashford and played Igalo down the middle and have them sort of play in tandem. There were some solutions there, but I just feel like Solskjaer didn't really know what to do. And he's, that's the one criticism I have with this current regime. I think, obviously, if we want to stick with Solskjaer, we're going to have to trust him and just give him money to just buy the best players that he the player buy the players that he needs that fit his um, philosophy. So, um, yeah, philosophy. Yeah, that fit his philosophy. But if those players don't work out, right? If it doesn't work out in terms of you know, let's just say if it's a tight game and he don't know what to do, he doesn't have the ability to change a game by bringing on a James Milner kind of level player and affecting the game or bringing on a fullback what you know how Mourinho used to be when he was at his pump when he was able to like take off a right winger to bring on a fullback to then push people up you know whatever to double up on that side or to take off a, a centre back and put a striker another striker up front so he played with three take off a couple of midfield I don't know those kind of um, really uh, radical sort of moves in game to sort of spark a reaction from the team right um, sometimes positive or negative he doesn't have it so my only worry is that if you give this guy money and you sign the players that he wants and he doesn't necessarily do it, then you're just, especially if, if without a football director, I think I'd be a lot more, I'd be a lot less worried if we had a football director. Like if we had somebody that was signing a certain type of player um, under the guise of playing a certain type of foot, brand of football so that even if Solskjaer doesn't work out, this more likely than not the next manager coming in will want to keep those players. I just have a feeling a lot of the players we have at the moment, if we were to get, you know, like a, a ball playing manager, would they want a Maguire? Would they want Aaron Wan-Bissaka? Right? Like would those be their players? And that's like already nearly a hundred million pounds worth of talent, which is going to be, you know, writing off. And we, we're not honestly going to be doing that, right? Because, you know, one's an England international, or both England internationals starting. So that's not going to happen. So that's the only reason, that's the only thing that I worry about uh, with this stuff. What we're going to do going forward, really, in the regard of managers and team. But hey, one last game against Leicester on Sunday. We could turn it around. You never know. We could sneak it. But it doesn't really feel like we, we deserve it, really, especially off the back of the last few games. We really kind of let ourselves down, but I don't know. Maybe it's just a fitness factor. Maybe it's just a tiredness in general. Um, you know, I don't know. Let's see um, going forward on a Sunday. But that was disappointing, man. Really disappointing.